Howdy folks, in this video we are going to be seeing what happens when you use multiple aggregation iterators inside of a revisor, right? Uh, this is the kind of thing that you may not be sure that you could do, mainly because I haven't shown you an example of it yet, but it works just fine, and I'm going to uh, prove to you that it works just fine, or maybe not prove to you, but at least demonstrate how it works just fine. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, plenty of that, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? I'm here in Filter Revisors Part 1.xlsx, and I'm in the multi-tab. Right? I'm not even really sure what to call it. But here we've got some pretty similar to what we had before, where we've got Calculate. Uh, we're going to use the Calculate Revisor. We've got this sub-expression, and we've got our override filter down here. The, the big difference is before, our sub-expression always had like one of these little pattern things in it. A builder pattern is a technical name for what we're calling it. Uh, but it had one iterator. It usually had some x, right? Some x, mini, and then price per times units, right? We just had that. So you may be asking the question, well, is it, is it possible? Is it legal? Is it allowed? Is it okay with uh, with people? If in my sub-expression, I have not one, uh, but two aggregators, a max x and a min x, and I subtract them, right, one from the other. Uh, yeah, it works just fine. You can put whatever you want in a sub-expression uh, as long as it returns the appropriate value. So for calculate, since calculate returns uh, scalar, single values, Anything in the sub-expression that returns a single value is just fine. Uh, because we're essentially taking a number and subtracting another number, well, that's going to produce a number, which is a scalar, so that's okay. Uh, we can even put in a sub-expression 1 plus 1, and that's just fine. We can even put in a, a number, 24, and it works just fine. The sub-expression can be anything, any set of instructions that returns a single value, which is what we've got down here. Let me show you, okay? All right, so... Uh, we see calculate. First thing we want to do is freeze the sub-expression, right? We're going to need a lot more ice this time because it's a bigger sub-expression. Uh, with calculate, the sub-expression is everything in the first argument, everything before that first comma. I've used these little lines here to highlight it for us. So let's just go select that stuff. There we go, right there, something like that. Yeah, I can even do that. Fits a little, fits a little nicer. Okay, so that's a sub-expression. I'm going to freeze it. Uh, when you're writing your own dash code, you're going to have to freeze it with your eyeballs. Here in Excel, I could freeze it by changing the background color, right? There we go. Now it's a big block of ice. Ooh, very, very cold, right? Okay. It's going to be summertime, so it's going to be nice to have this big frozen uh, sub-expression to keep me cool here in my office. Okay. So we've got our sub-expression. Uh, now Calculate says, all right, I want to run this after I revise the filters. How am I going to revise the filters? Oh, this again. Yeah, this again. But it's good to see it many, many times. Okay. So we've got this derivation where we take uh, all of a, uh, a column in the physical table, which is to say we get all the values of shift regardless of whether or not they are visible, right? Well, there's no filters in the filter context. So we didn't really have to worry about that. We're just going to get both shifts, right? Well, if you look at shift up here, we've got lunch and dinner. So the derivation on line 14 is going to produce this temp table. Shift is lunch and dinner. There we go. And we're going to take that temp table and pass it into the filter iterator, which is going to add an expression column with this definition for every single row check to see if that row shift is equal to dinner. And just keep the true rows because that's what the filter iterator does. Okay, well, I can do that. I'm going to come up here and type in exp. I've already done all the hard work. So as soon as I hit enter, bam, there we go. Okay. So for each and every row check to see if that row shift is equal to dinner. Does lunch equal dinner? Nope, we get a false. Does dinner equal dinner? Yes, we get a true. So what does the filter iterator do? It's going to keep the true rows. That's what it does with the expression column. Okay. So we end up with a temp table that looks like this. Shift equals <clears throat> dinner. There we go. Okay. So <clears throat> this is going to be uh, the override in a second. Right now it's just a temp table, though. Uh, when we finish running the filter iterator right there, uh, filter doesn't know that it's part of the calculate um, uh, function, right? All it knows is that it produces a temp table. So it produces this temp table right there, and it hands it off to whoever asked for it. And it happened to be, uh, happens to be the calculate asked for it. So Calculate says, thank you very much, Mr. Filter Iterator. Uh, I'm going to take that temp table and add it to the filter context, create a revised filter context within which I can uh, unfreeze and run my sub-expression. Filter says, I don't care. I don't really care what you do with it. Calculate says, well, I'm going to tell you anyways. Okay, so Calculate takes that temp table. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to get my arrows right there. I'm going to left-click and drag. And uh, it's more accurate to say that it makes a copy, but or more accurate to say that it moves it. I like to see it in both places. So I'm going to hold down Control, get a little plus symbol next to my cursor right there, and let go to make a copy of it. Okay? So Calculate has taken uh, that temp table and added it to the filter context, right? Uh, if there were multiple override filters in Calculate, it would add those as well, but there's just the one. So we're actually done revising the filters. So let's set that filter to Shift equals dinner. Set the visibility to Shift equals dinner. There we go. Now we're just looking at the dinner rows. Okay. 
Calculate says, all right, I've revised the filter context. This is what the uh, model looks like under that new revised filter context. I can now unfreeze and run my sub expression, right? So I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to need, um, I'm going to need a bigger microwave this time. So I'm going to throw this in the oven at 425 for a couple of minutes. 425 Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Don't, don't get, uh, don't panic. Okay, uh, so I am going to change the background color to this dark gray. So we're, we've unfrozen it, and it leaves a little puddle behind it, just to remind us what that sub-expression is visually. Okay, so what are we doing here? Uh, well, we've got uh, two aggregation iterators with a minus symbol between them. So we'll, we'll just do them one at a time. Okay, so uh, let's do this top one. So here we're going to get uh, all the visible rows of mini. We're going to add, we're going to pass into the max x iterator, which is going to add a column with that definition to it and take the biggest value. So basically, we're going to get the, the highest price, okay? So here's where we're going. We're going to get the highest price in this one. We're going to get the lowest price in this one. And if we subtract the lowest price from the highest price, we'll get the range of prices. Kind of a contrived example, but that's what we're doing. Okay, so let's go get all the visible rows of many. Well, it's just these three right there, so I select those. Control-C to copy. Come on down here. Control-Alt-V to paste special. I'm going to paste values. And click OK. There we go. That is the that right there is the uh, temp table produced by the derivation on line four. That physical table derivation where we just ask for the mini table. It produces uh, that temp table right there. We pass that into the max x iterator, which is going to add this column to it and max the results. And I've already got that hard work done, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type in exp. As soon as I hit enter, right, I get nine, eleven, and seven. Right, so I get for every row I get the price per. So I get nine, eleven, and seven. What do I do with the results? I'm going to take the max. Right? Take it to the max. The max of what? This expression column right here. Close my parentheses, and I'm going to hit enter, and I get 11 bucks. Right? So that 11 bucks is essentially the top bit right there. So I'm going to, here where it says top bit, I'm going to type in 11 and hope that I remember to put my format I get. Hey, I did. How about that? $11. Okay, there we go. So we've got the top bit. Now let's go get the bottom bit. Then we'll subtract the bottom bit from the top bit. Okay. So it's almost the same thing. The only difference is which iterator do we use. We're going to go get all the visible rows of mini with that derivation right there, the physical table derivation, pass it to the min x iterator, which is going to add uh, this column to it. The exact same definition is up here, uh, but unlike up here where it takes the max, down here we're going to take the min. Okay, you probably get it. Okay, so I'm going to select those right there. So on line 9, it says go get all the visible rows of mini and produce a temp table based on that. Hey, I could do that. Come down here. Uh, Control-C up there. Control-Alt-V down here. Pay special. Click on Values and click OK. There we go. All right, so now I've got that temp table, the temp table from that derivation right there. I pass it to the min x iterator, which adds that column to it and mins the results. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type in EXP. I hit Enter. And just like up here, it's the same definition, so I get the same values. I get 9, 11, and 7, because just like above, it's the price per for every single row. But unlike above, where I took the max, down here I'm going to take the min, because it's the min x function. So if I take the min, the min of those, take it to the min. Uh, what do I get? What do I get? Uh, so 9, 11, and 7. I go ahead, hit enter, and I get 7. Okay. So the top bit was 11. The bottom bit is 7. Is 7. There we go. I get 7 right there. Okay. So what do we do with this? Well, in the instructions here, we, we say subtract the bottom bit from the top bit. Okay. I could do that. So if I come over here, if I take the top bit, and I subtract the bottom bit. What do I get? Who's good at math? I get four, which is the actual uh, answer that we're going to return. Actually, it's four dollars. It should have a dollar symbol in front of it. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Control C. Sometimes I'm really good at this stuff. Other times I just get make little mistakes. So I'm going to paste special and format. Hopefully, when you get it, it'll look exactly correct. There we go. Align it to the left. There we go. Okay. So this four bucks. Uh, is going to be the answer. Is going to be the answer. It's actually the, the the price range during dinner, I guess, is sort of maybe the business interpretation. But before I return the four dollars, um, I and by I I mean the the calculate function is going to say, hey, I made a mess of the filter context, and I'm a reviser, and that means that I'm a good roommate, which means I clean up after myself. So I created this new filter context with shift equals dinner. I now have to set it back the way that I found it, right? Just in case anybody else wants to do anything. So I'm going to come up here, Control C to copy. Come over here, Control V to paste. Okay, we've now reset the filters back to the way we found them. I'll go ahead and clear this. Just by checking that right there. There we go. Okay, good. So now uh, the $4 uh, can be returned, right? And so that 4 bucks is the actual answer. So uh, what happens if you've got uh, uh, you know multiple aggregation iterators inside your calculate? Well, you, you know, you, you have to have 
some sort of um, um, operator between them, a, a plus symbol or a minus symbol or an equal symbol, something that uh, creates instructions that return a single value. But as long as you do that, uh, it works just fine. Okay, uh, so we really, I think we only need the one example of that. Uh, I, I sure do hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.